So we have two concentric conducting spheres of radii R and 2R. The inner conductor has a charge Q. The outer conductor has a charge minus 2Q. Now we are doubling the charge on the inner conductor. Then we have to state that the potential difference between the two spheres will become two times, become four times, be halved or remain the same. That is the question. So let's understand the key concept involved here. Okay. Now if we have concentric conducting spheres, then let's say on the inner sphere, the charge is Q in and on the outer sphere, the charge is Q out and the radii are R1 and R2 respectively. Then the potential difference between the two spheres is given by K into Q inside into 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. The important thing to note here is that the potential difference does not depend on the charge on the outer sphere. All right. So this is a result which we should remember, but I'm also going to solve it so that you understand how the result was, how did the result came come. All right. So let's understand how do we calculate the potential difference. Okay, now on the inner shell, the potential difference is going to be due to the shell itself plus due to this outer shell. Okay, so I'm going to write the potential due to the inner shell and that is going to be K into Q inside upon R1. Okay, because we are talking about the surface of the sphere. Okay, so the potential would be given by KQ upon the radius simply. Okay. Now, because of the outer sphere, we want to calculate the potential at a point inside. All right, we want to calculate the potential over here and due to this charge, which is distributed on the outside. Okay, so for any spherical charge distribution at any internal point, the potential is given by, it is given by KQ upon the radius, okay, is equal to the surface potential of the sphere. So this will become KQ out upon R2. All right. What will be the potential of the outer sphere? It is going to be KQ in. Now due to Q in, we are trying to calculate the potential here. So what is the distance from the center? It is an outside point. So the distance from the center comes into the picture and that is R2. So this is going to become KQ in upon R2 plus the potential due to that sphere itself. So that is going to become KQ out upon R2, which is equal to its surface potential. Now, if I find V in minus V out, then this term is going to go away and the potential difference is going to be K into Q inside into one by R1 minus one by R2. All right, this is how this result was derived. Now it is a very, very important result to remember. All right, now what we are doing here is that the charge on the inner shell, we are making it twice. Okay, if we are doing that, so we can see very clearly that if, if the radii radius of the spheres uh, is kept constant, then the potential is proportional to the charge inside. It does not depend on the charge outside. All right. So if Q in is doubled, then the potential is obviously going to be doubled. And that is going to be my answer. Let's have a look at the options. So option A is going to be the right option. So we have two concentric conducting spheres A and B. The potential of A is VA, the potential of B is VB. Now we earth the conductor B and now we have to find out what will be the potential of A. All right, these are the options. So first let's understand the key concept here. The key concept here again is that the potential difference between two charged concentric shells is equal to Q inside, KQ inside upon one by R1 minus one by R2. The important thing to note here is that the potential difference does not depend on Q out. All right, let's keep this in mind and let's solve this question. Okay, so can we say that the potential difference initially is going to be VA minus VB and that is going to be equal to K into QA. Now QA is charge on the inner sphere multiplied by 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. Is that correct? Perfect. Now we have earthed the conductor B. What happens when earthing takes place? The potential of B is going to become zero. How is it going to become zero? So charge may go from B to the earth or the charge may come from earth to B. Does not matter. Ultimately, the potential of B is going to become zero. All right, number one. Now look at conductor A. It is an isolated conductor. Okay, isolated means it is not connected to any external point. If it is an isolated conductor, will the charge on the conductor change? 
Not at all. All right. The charge of an isolated conductor does not change. So the charge on A is still still going to be Q A. Okay. And what is the potential difference? The potential difference. Let's call it V A prime minus V B prime is going to be K Q A into one by R one minus one by R two because it does not depend on the charge on shell B. All right. So if we compare this, the potential difference is still. V A minus V B. All right. Now, since we have earth the conductor B, its potential is going to become zero. So the potential of A is going to be V A minus V B. All right. That is my answer. So let's have a look at the options. So option D is going to be the right option. Two small electric dipoles, each of dipole moment P, are situated at zero 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 and R zero zero. The electric potential at a point r by two comma root three r by two comma zero is all right. The two dipoles are situated like this, and we have to find out what is the potential at this point. The important thing to note here is that this is a small electric dipole. What does it mean? Let's understand the key concept. The electrostatic potential due to a short dipole or a small dipole is given by V is equal to kP cos theta by r square. Okay, P is the dipole moment, which is Q multiplied by two L. If 2L is the distance between the charges, okay. What is R? R is the distance from the center of the dipole to the point at which the potential has to be calculated. Very important. The distance is always measured from the center of the dipole. And what is theta? Theta is what R makes, what angle R makes with the direction of the dipole. That is also very important, okay. And this is only going to be valid if L is much much less than R, which means it is a short dipole. Then potential will be given by K P cos theta by R square. So we should obviously remember this result, but we should also understand what are the meanings of the terms and also what is the condition under which this formula is going to be valid. All right. So in this question, we have a short dipole, so certainly we can use this formula. All right. So we have to calculate the potential at this point. So the potential at this point will be the sum of the potentials due to both the dipoles. Pretty simple. So let's talk about this dipole first. Now this is the dipole moment, negative charge to positive charge. This is going to be the distance, okay, which is measured from the center of the dipole, okay. And what is the angle that is required? This angle is required. Let's call it theta, because what the distance makes with the direction of the dipole. That is the angle that is required to calculate the electrostatic potential. Okay. Similarly, let's find this. This is the direction of dipole. Now, this is the distance that is required, measured from the center of the dipole, and this is the angle that is required. All right. The angle this line or this distance line makes with the direction of the dipole. That is the angle. So, theta prime is the angle. That we require in this situation. All right. So our job is to find the distances and find theta. Now, if we look at this coordinate, what it tells me that if we drop a perpendicular, then this line, this point N, is situated on the perpendicular bisector of OM. Right? It is pretty clear. So this would be r by two. This would be r by two, and this distance is going to be root three r by two. Okay. Now what we have to calculate? First, we have to calculate theta. So from this triangle, let's call this x. From the triangle N X M, we can see that tan theta is going to be root three r by two divided by r by two. So this is going to become root three by two. So theta is going to, or this is going to become root three. I'm sorry. So theta is going to come out to be sixty degree. Perfect. So theta is figured out. Now by simple geometry, we can see that this angle is also going to be theta. So this angle theta prime is going to be one twenty degree. Okay. What else do we need? We need this distance. Let's call it r prime. Now again from triangle N X M, we can say that r prime square is going to be root three r by two square plus r by two square. Okay. And if we calculate this, r prime will come out to be simply r. All right, which is very simple to see because this is sixty degree. This is also sixty degree. So this is an equilateral triangle. Okay, now the potential at point N is going to be the potential due to both the dipoles. So first, I am writing due to the dipole M. So potential is equal to K P into cos theta. What is cos theta? Cos sixty degree 
upon R square plus the potential due to this dipole is going to be Kp cos and what is theta prime? Theta prime is 120 degree divided by R square. Is that correct? So from here, cos 60 degree is half and cos 120 degree is minus half. So this is half and this is minus half. So if we add them, we are going to get zero. So the electrostatic potential at point N is going to be zero. All right, that is my answer. But the important thing to notice, how do we calculate the electrostatic potential at a point due to a short dipole? So that is done. My answer is zero. Now let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be the correct option. An electric dipole of length 2 cm is placed with its axis making an angle of 30 degree to a uniform electric field having intensity 10 to the power 5 Newton per coulomb. If it experiences a torque of 10 root 3 Newton meter, then the potential energy of the dipole is. Alright, this is the situation. So let's understand the key concept first. We are talking about torque and we are talking about potential energy. So what are these terms? So the torque on a short dipole in a uniform electric field is given by tau is equal to p cross e and the potential energy of a short dipole in a uniform electric field is given by minus p dot e. All right, keeping these two things in mind, we can easily solve this question. But remember, these results are only for short dipoles. All right. So what will be the magnitude of torque? So if torque is p cross e, then the magnitude of torque is going to be p e sine theta. Is that correct? Perfect. Now the potential energy is minus p dot e. So the potential is going to, energy is going to become minus p e cos theta. All right. Now what are the things which is give what which are given? What are the things we need to find out? So we have tau. Okay. Very good. We have theta. All right. Very good. What do we need to find out? We need to find out the potential energy. Okay. Now other things are also given, but I can see that those things can easily be eliminated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the equations. So tau by u is going to become minus tan theta. All right. So u is going to become minus tau upon tan theta. A simple substitution minus tau is 10 root 3 divided by tan theta. So what is theta? Theta is 30 degrees. So tan 30 degrees is going to be 1 by root 3. So this is going to become minus 30 joule and that is going to be my answer. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option C is going to be the right option. All right, sometimes you get extra data just to confuse you. All right, but with the right concepts, you can avoid that. Find the work required to rotate the system of charges plus Q minus Q connected to a rod of mass M and length L by an angle of 180 degree. Okay, so if this is the orientation and the direction of the dipole axis is making an angle 53 degree with the electric field. Now we are rotating it by 180 degree, which means the dipole axis is like this. The electric field is like this. So it is making an angle 180 degree plus 53 degree. All right, this is the situation we need to calculate what was the work done to do this. These are the options. So let's understand the key concept first. The key concept is very simple. The potential energy of a short dipole in a uniform electric field is given by u is equal to minus p dot e. All right, let's keep that in mind and let's try to solve this question. Okay, so u, so first of all, we're talking about work done. We're talking about energy. So obviously what is going to be involved is the work energy theorem. So the work energy theorem states that the work done by the external force will be equal to the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy. This expression is deduced from work energy theorem and this is a very handy expression to use. Okay, now what we are doing is we are only rotating it. We are not giving it any kinetic energy. So this change in kinetic energy is going to be zero. So W external is simply delta U. So W external is going to be delta U which is the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. So the final potential energy is going to be minus P E cos theta final minus the initial potential energy is going to be minus P E cos theta initial. Why? Because U is equal to minus P dot E 
which I can write it as minus PE cos theta, where theta is the angle between the dipole axis and the electric field. All right, so this becomes PE into cos theta initial minus cos theta final. All right, so now all we need to do is substitute. Okay, so the charge is Q and the distance between the charges is L. So the dipole moment is going to become QL multiplied by the electric field, which is E. Now, what is cos theta one? Initially, it is making an angle 53 degree. So cos 53 degree minus what is what is the angle it is making later on? So now the positive charge is here, negative charge is here. The direction of dipole moment will be like this. Electric field will be like this. So this angle is going to be 180 degree plus 53 degree. Is that correct? Now cos is a negative, cos is negative in the third quadrant. Okay, which means cos 180 degree plus 53 degree is going to become minus cos 53 degree. So this is going to become QLE multiplied by 2 cos 53 degree. All right. So this becomes QLE 2 and then cos 53 degree is 3 by 5. So putting all of this together, my final answer is going to be 6 by 5 QLE and that is going to be my answer. Now let's have a look at the options. So option C is going to be the right option.